Hey guys, Jane here, and we are talking about prepping our story for NaNoWriMo. Um, and today I actually want to talk about creating a setting. This is more important if you're doing like a fantasy world or a science fiction world. My NaNoWriMo project is science fiction-y, so it's important for me to do this part. If your story is very um, if it's very exotic, if it's a setting that doesn't exist in the real world, I would say this is a really important video to watch. If you are writing a story that's in like New York or Ohio or you know, somewhere that you can kind of verify facts, do a little research, make sure you get it right. But this, you don't need to do this intense planning for um, a real world setting. Um, now, if you're doing a historical, you may because you at least need to know how, you need to know facts about your world, but also how your characters interact with those facts. Um, if for NaNoWriMo, you're going to be doing a sci-fi or fantasy, or in some cases a horror, anything that takes place in kind of a, a different world or society, oh, dystopian, you'll want to find, figure out some things about your setting before you start writing your story. And probably before you start plotting too. Um, there's really three, ways you can plan and flesh out a story. And I generally suggest using one, either either doing character sketches, doing setting sketches, or plotting. Taking one element and focusing on that, and then um, building on that with the other elements. So if your story is in a fantastical world and you haven't really thought much about character, you can start with setting and say, this is what my world's like, and then you can figure out who should be in your world and look at the conflicts that would be inherent in that world. Um, again, that's it's a really, it's a slippery thing because most books are not setting books. That, that doesn't, that's not something we see very much. You might see it again in fantasy, but even then, not always. Sometimes you can develop a character first and then move on to the intricacies of setting. All right, so... This is kind of the bare minimum of what you need to know about your setting um, in order to have it prepared so that when you go into NaNoWriMo, you're not struggling to figure out the elements of your world and you can just write your story. We want to make sure as much is prepped beforehand as we can because you don't want to be pantsing your story as you're trying to do 50,000 words. If you're naturally a pantser, that's fine. It's really hard to pants 50,000 words because... Honestly, you just have too much. There's just too much information that you have to come up with. And it's just, it's really hard to do when you're trying to get a certain word count in per day, especially if you don't have hours and hours and hours on end. You don't want to be like in a scene where you're like, where you're like, oh, I don't know if I have a president or a king and I'm not really sure how that affects my world. You want that all settled beforehand. So. Here are the key points that you need to know about your setting if you have a world that is out of this world or a historical environment that you don't know a lot about. Um, and I am looking at notes. I wrote for my writer's group and will be publishing eventually, but not anytime soon, um, Jane's Guide to Brainstorming and Outline. So this is what I'm referencing and it does have a section on setting. Um, and then look at my list. Um, the first thing you need, oh, and I should add, I apologize, I'm writing a science fiction story and so I used this to help me understand what I needed for my setting of my story. And I'm going to go through and as I talk about this, I will tell you a little bit about my setting. Um, I didn't, I didn't do my setting first, I did my, I did part of my setting first, I should say, but I'm mostly focused on characters, <clears throat> but I did do a whole section on the setting once I had developed the characters a little bit better. All right, so the first thing is geography. What does your place look like? Is it mountainous? Is it lots of ocean? Is it cold? Is it hot? Does it rain all the time? Because those things are gonna affect your story and what your characters can and can't do and what plot points you can and can't add. Um, if your people live in a desert, you're not going to have an avalanche, probably, but you could totally have a sandstorm. Um, my story, my characters are on a spaceship and it's climate controlled. So it's very indoorsy, 
I can't do anything unless I'm on a planet because my characters are traveling through different planets. Most of the story will take place inside a spaceship, so I can't do a lot of the, the stuff that you can't do in a building. The next one, and this may or may not apply to all stories, but I would say it does to a degree to most, and that is theology. Does your world have a certain religious or worldview? The characters in my story are part of a cult, so they have a very complex religion and worldview. But if you're doing something where religion doesn't play a big part in your story, at least know why people view the world the way they do. Um, Theology affects things like birth rituals, death rituals, so many things about morality, the way people live. It's really important to know what your people believe, whether they believe in some kind of divine being, whether, you know, again, as a society, um, not necessarily individuals unless that's part of your story, but what does your society look like? Do they believe in an afterlife? Do they believe in you know, a moral code of some kind? Do they have prophets? Do they have, you know, uh, some kind of religious book? How do they determine who is good and who's evil and what is just in their society? Um, so theology or even, again, like a moral system if it's not an actual religious system, some kind of here's our codes in our society. Number three, <clears throat> an economic system. Do your people in your world practice capitalism, communism, socialism, something else? You know, how are your people interacting with each other and how does that change who they are? Um, my characters live in a communal thing, so I would say they're basically communist um, because everybody does work. You're assigned a task and that's your job and then you get the benefits of the work that everybody else is doing. So it's very communal living. Um, I don't, I haven't necessarily, I, I'm gonna say there's no currency, but obviously there probably is some currency on the planets that my people stop at. So I'm assuming they're gonna have to grow something important on their ship to trade with the people on the planets they met, meet, but I haven't figured that out. But that's an important thing I'll need to figure out before day one of NaNoWriMo. The next thing, Government. How does your government work? Is there a president? Is it a democracy? Is it a dictatorship? Um, in my story, as I said, it's a cult, so the cult leader is the person in charge. Um, but knowing your government will change a lot of things about your story and, and what your characters are doing. Um, I love monarchy personally, so a lot of times when I do fantasy, I do monarchy, but like I said, this time I've got a cult. The next thing is weather. How does weather affect your story? And that kind of goes into the same as geography, but it can vary a little bit. Um, I live in Ohio, and so we have three seasons, but I also lived for a while in Alaska, and they have sort of two seasons. They have winter, which happens, oh, right around Halloween and stays until Easter, and then they have a very cool summer. Summer was about 70 degrees. So, you know, you're gonna need to be aware of that because if nothing else, you're gonna need to know the time span of your story. And are your characters gonna be fighting the elements along the way or are things gonna be pretty chill and okay? Landscape, and again, this comes with geography to a degree, but what does your world look like? What kind of architecture does it have? What are you in cities? Is it rural? You know, um, where is it in the world? I guess that's the more part of the geography. Like, is it, are there different countries? Is there a division like the area that's got the forests is this country? The area that, you know, is landlocked over here is this country? You know, those are things to keep in mind. It's great to draw a map. I love maps. And if your world's complicated, you should probably have a map of some kind just to tell you the separation. Um, when I wrote Secrets of Arash Innes, I had drawn out a map. Um, I don't remember the names of the islands because it's been years now since I've written that book, but I know that Arash Innes was an island shaped like a dragon because it was an island where there were dragons, 
But then I also had two other countries that played an important role. And one was like a Middle Eastern type setting country, and then one was like a medieval England country. So, you know, know those kind of things about your landscape. The one that had the dragons was very like hilly and foresty and, um, you know, it had a lot of caves and, and mountains. And I think there's a whole scene where there's, <clears throat> there's all kinds of, of ash out of the volcano, I want to say. It's been a while since I read it, or I wrote it, so I'm, I remember ash or snow. Because the picture, I think, that I wanted for the cover originally was snow. And I was like, yeah, I don't have snow in my world. I need ash. All right, so the next one, important customs and holidays. You don't have to have this necessarily in your story, but it's a good idea. How do they come of age? You know, do they have some kind of, of rituals for becoming a man, becoming a woman? <clears throat> How are birthdays handled? Is there something like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter? What do they celebrate? Because what people celebrate tells you a lot about their culture and traditions. Um, another thing, natural resources. What do your people have available to them? Um, in my character's story, they are a very agrarian society. They are on a spaceship, but they grow stuff and have animals. And that's important to the story. So what kind of resources do your people have? Do they have technology? Do they have, you know, oil? Do they have, you know, just lots of trees? All of those things are going to affect what your characters can use, what they want, and how they see the world. And the last thing on my list <clears throat> is population. And population is kind of varied. It, it means a couple different things the way I'm using it. I definitely do mean how many people, but I also mean who. You know, what kind of, are there more than one type of person? Like, is it a diverse culture, ethnic, ethnically diverse, or is it just like one kind of people? Is it a young culture? Is there a lot of children? Is it a lot of elderly? Is there a big disparity between those numbers? You know, is there like a couple elderly people and a lot of kids? How does that change the dynamics? Obviously people die young. Um, if there's a lot of elders and not a lot of kids, how come the kids aren't being born? Um, if it's pretty even, that may not be a huge part of your plot. Do people live with their families? Do families tend to cluster together or are families separated? And what does your population and demographics look like? So <clears throat> knowing your setting is really important as you get your story together and having a lot of this decided ahead of time will help you as you move through your story so that when you come to a point where you're like, oh, I need to figure out something that happens here. Can you use something from the setting? Can you have a government thing? Can you have a weather thing? Can you have a season thing, a population thing? You have all that already mapped out and know what your world's all about. And once you have that, Again, you're set for your setting and you can move on to the other elements of the story, which is plotting and characters. Um, in a setting heavy story, again, that's gonna be a lot of your fantasy and science fiction. That's really important to know before you start building the rest of it because you don't wanna get into a system where what you are writing is not congruent with the world you've created. This can also be true too. I should add of magic systems that can be part of settings is if you have magic, how does it work? And how is that important in the setting? Um, a good example is Mistborn and the metals and the way that the story evolves around the different, you know, the different class of people plus the people who can use the metals and how the metals are used and all that. So know how your world works. It's basically what I'm saying here. Before you get to the next part, before you uh, outline your story, know how your world works so that you can use that information to create an amazing outline so that you can beat NaNoWriMo. All right, guys, give me a like, give me a subscribe. See you later. Bye.